We got all this cool art around us. Nice. Comfortable <sighs> right here. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Nice comfort zone. <laughs> Indeed, it is very cozy in here, man. All right, man. you hit the red light when you're ready, dude. It's going, man. We're already going. I'm going to, you know, let's do this thing, right? How about, uh, oh, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Frober. <laughs> Woo, yeah. yeah. Party on, everybody. Yeah, party on. Stuff. Do people Wait. still party on? I don't. I totally, <laughs> party. there was a time when I totally partied on uh, and oh, on yeah. and on and on. Uh, you know, before we get started, speaking yeah. of partying on, yeah. uh, can we talk a little stoner talk? Talk some stoner because talk, man. Because I've, Jason, one of my favorite all-time stoners <laughs> in my life, has been a little less stony lately. A little bit, yeah. No, wait a minute. A lot of bit. A lot of bit. A lot of bit. Oh, by the way, I'm Stoner Dude, and this is Jason Froberg at Space uh, Brain Station. Space Brain Station. You nailed it, bud. I I, I listened. Well, this is my third time doing the show. Oh, wait. So no, each time I learn- Not going to be the last either. Each time I little, learn a little more, and one of them was to how to say the name <laughs> of your show. <laughs> but anyway, so back to the stony talk. Jason Froberg, one of my favorite all-time stoners of all time. Well, thank you. Uh, a man from Stockton, California, <laughs> with, with uh, degrees in music and sound. Uh, uh, one, uh, I, I remember a, a, a very long hair, braided, bearded, uh, very traditional, old-school, hippie-looking dude. I had a little hair. And uh, you uh, definitely someone who loved his edibles, <laughs> someone who loved all the different strains of flour, uh, someone who loved all the uh, oils and the waxes and the this and the that. Don't leave home without it. But it's been now how long since you have not partaken uh, September of 2020. September I, of 2020. I, it just fell away from me. We man. lost another one. Yeah. R.I.P. Yeah, bro. Well, I mean, I'm I'm a happy guy. I, I let it go because it just didn't have any context to me anymore, you know? And I was just... Uh, what, what happened to me was... I'm concerned. No. But wait, first, before I say, before I go into yeah. my concern... Let's hear it. I'm very proud of you, number one. Thank you. Uh, you've taken this whole life by the horns or by the balls or however you take it. I appreciate it. And uh, you've certainly moved forward with this uh, new modern living Jason Froberg. <laughs> I appreciate it. I still wake and bake every day. Yeah, man. There's uh, nothing wrong with I that. I just hit a big old fatty right before I walked into your studio. Oh. I would have brought my bong, but I didn't want to offend you with my ah. smoke. No way, man. You can never offend me with your smoke, <laughs> man. But you uh, look great, Jason. Thank you so much. And I much. know you're doing great, too. So, yeah. kids out there, that was like a before and after. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> I bet I can find a, a picture of my fucking hairy ass before. Uh, <laughs> Make sure you put that on yeah, the screen. Let me see if right I can. On. I, I got to just dig into some Facebook I mean, archives. I just want the world to see the transformation. Those who know you know. Maybe this could be a lesson for the young folks out there who are thinking about changing their ways for to better their lives. Uh, you could be what do you call a, a shiny example, something like that, yeah. man. I, uh, you know, I just am trying to do the best I can do, be the best guy I can be, kind of thing. Is it making you money? It's that's the, the number one thing. It's making me money. This this. This is not a choice that I made for for my own personal Okay, then style. let me get a little personal here. Yeah. Did you is, sell out to the man? I sold out to the uh, man uh, and the uh, devil and anybody <laughs> else. The, whoever whoever's the highest, buying. Whoever's the <laughs> highest paying job. Whoever's paying, right? Yeah, on. man. I, uh, well, not, thank you for having me on the dude, show again, thank Jason. you, man. I appreciate it. Now, I... Uh, I, you know, I went corporate and I, uh, I never looked back, man. I, uh, you know, I really enjoy the, um, oh, that's a good one right there. Fucking hairy monster. Oh, you're going to show the uh, world. Yeah, no. So I went corporate. I, uh, I, I, I love it. You know, the gear's really good. I feel you like know, I'm interviewing you nice. now. I know, right? This is the Stoner Dude uh, show. My I first guest all, is I Jason Froberg. I cut all my hair off. And this is, uh, here's for the, those who don't know. That's that, something that I used that's to look rock like. and roll, dude. Yeah, that's that was uh, 
me before. Flam- uh, what is that, your Facebook page or something? Yeah, it was on my Facebook page. Nice, man. yeah. Those, you've got the killer rock poster uh, photos, at least. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you know that you can go there anytime you want again, any day of the week. Yeah. Because being the awesome bass player you were. Well, I, you know, I had, uh, you know, my hair was pretty long. And uh, here's another one. As you can see, like, fuck it. I was doing the rock and roll thing yeah, for a while. Yeah, totally. And uh, yeah, no, I just, I, I, you know, I'm. You look At like you could be a point, Slayer or like, something. I wish. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to, you know, do something where I could like uh, have a, a daytime schedule and uh, and save for retirement and you know put some money away and like mixing bands is great, but the money's not. See, that I keep great. Going, I keep going down the stoner hole even yeah. more, the rabbit hole more and more. You know, about eight years ago, I moved to Vegas, and I started. Uh, appearing with my artwork, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, on the internet oh, around yeah. me, we surrounded ourselves with some artwork, beautiful um, artwork. So I've been going. I moved here eight years ago, and there started being in Las Vegas these what they're called glass shows. Okay, glass art. Now, what does glass art mean? Of course. Well, it could be, of course, high end glass art that the glass blowers make. You know, really cool, sculpted pieces of work that are worth thousands of dollars but i would say about 80 to 90 percent of the glass art is bongs and pipes <laughs> which is perfect for me yeah it was the right uh scenario the right environment for me it was surprising because vegas eight years ago was like uh zero tolerance when it came to weed it was a felony yeah you could go to prison i was worried about that when i first moved here i'm like do i really want to move to vegas where i can go to prison for a joint in my car <laughs> now there's a dispensary on every single corner yeah it's Every beautiful man 24 7 you gotta love that <laughs> so anyways i started doing these glass shows with my artwork and i would be like at the end of somebody's booth table like like they're doing me a favor just to give me like i don't know this much space to, to draw yeah and show my artwork fast forward now eight years later and now these glass shows are these huge uh they fill these huge convention halls for three and four days in a row. There's Champs. There's Glass Vegas, which I attend. And uh, now I got a big full table with a full spread. Uh, I think there's somewhere on my on my Facebook uh, pages, on my uh, Facebook, Facebook page, page up, on my face of it. But anyways, and I display my art on these in these uh, these these big booths, and now they give me a, a hotel room, uh, and it's all these stoners from all over the world coming to Vegas. To like ta- uh, show their glass and smoke weed out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's giving everybody joints, you know. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, but yeah. anyways, I've been doing these things for eight years now, and uh, and what I've been doing lately now for this past year since the pandemic has resided just a little bit, yeah. it's still planned out and it's still demicking, but. You know, it's they eased up just a little bit. You yeah. know, we're able to go do things right now. You got your thing on Facebook. There is that the thing you're talking uh, about? Do you want to go look up some more pictures? A few more, a few more. Lower, right there. Just go there. That's the coloring book. So, anyways, that's when this is really what I'm going to here to promote right now. Anyways, okay. Is uh, so anyway, so I started doing these glass shows, and now I'm part of the Las Vegas Cannabis Awards show. Uh, I'm kind of turned into this kind of uh, th- through just being there. The local hippie stoner artist dude, right? So they see my artwork all the time. And I did some work, and I, I promoted them in your last show. I did some uh, artwork that was, ended up being a coloring book in a local magazine called Vegas Cannabis. Oh, nice. Again, more cannabis, right? More cannabis talk, more cannabis culture of industry is starting to develop. And because I did one coloring book page in that magazine, it led to... Dun, dun, dun. The release and final production and publication, and for your purchase, the new Stoner Dude coloring book. 24 awesome. full pages of Stoner Dude art on <laughs> a coloring book. And these are one sided pages, by the way, you know, so you don't bleed through. You know what I mean? And not the two sided pages where it goes right through it. Very high end. That's here, awesome. you can touch it. You can look at it. Ooh. I got another one right here. Here's one that I actually colored in a little bit. Nice. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Right. Oh, there yeah. you go. Where am I? Oh, right there, oh, right yeah. here, right here. Yeah. 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 You can pick oh, it up. Oh, look at that. Color it in there. That's awesome. Yeah, so the, I got now the Stoner Dude coloring book that you can get at my new website, stonerdudeart.com. 
Thank you very much. And on top of that. Uh, uh, and you can go over there right now. You, the viewer. Wait, who am I looking at? You, oh, you want to come back to the camera? You, the, the viewer. Camera. You, the viewer, right now. Go to stonerdudeart.com right this moment as we're speaking and order your book right now. This so anyways, nice I, do these, uh, I do these art shows yeah, and I've been selling my coloring books. stonerdudeart.com, by the way. Say that again? Oh, you're going there? Yeah, there yeah, you go. Stonerdudeart.com. You can see it right there. Oh, t-shirts. I like t-shirts. I'm uh, very thankful to my publisher, local Las Vegas publisher, Avant Pop Books, or Avant Pop Publishing. And so the local publisher that made this is in Vegas, and uh, the actual printer who made it and printed it, an old school printer that knows about coloring books and knew which paper to use and all that. Awesome. He printed it, and it was drawn in Vegas. So this is definitely a 100%... Las Vegas product, Stoner Dude, oh, StonerDudeArt.com. Support local artists. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. This thing is dope, dude. If you're lucky, I'll sign it for you. Ah, oh, <laughs> If man. you're lucky. How cool. And then it's going to be worth a lot of money. Millions. Millions. <laughs> I'll be selling it at auction. Yeah, eBay. These are great, dude. Thank you. Thank you. I'm digging this. Yeah, everybody has their favorite page. I personally like the... The gnarly A. I like a lot of old B movie kind of uh, <laughs> science fiction and horror. You know, monsters and aliens yeah. coming down to destroy the world and human and humanity. Which also leads me to yeah. discuss oh, the I new know. Bong album oh. by my original band Bong. I love Bong. Uh, it's, it's a theme. Ever since the pandemic, you know, I've been yeah. kind of apocalyptic. <laughs> just a little bit, right? Not too much, just a little bit. Yeah. I think, well, we're all, I think we're all a little bit apocalyptic these days. That's what they wanted. When, dude, when it first happened, I was all about it, bro. All I about was, what? Although, like, you know, living in the apocalypse. I was preparing for the apocalypse, man. I was getting all ready to go. I was like, I've been waiting my whole life for this right. moment. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I love that. I've been waiting my whole life for this moment. Yeah, man. I've I seen all the movies. <laughs> I've read all the comic books. Oh. I saw, yeah. Uh, I read the Bible. Right? Uh, just for that reason. Book. Let's face it. Most people, they read the Bible. I mean, you, you could argue this or debate this anytime you want. Yeah. But I think a lot of us, especially in the 70s and 80s, and I'm sure the 90s, you're a 90s kid, right? Yeah, I'm a 90s kid. Uh, they read the Bible because it was, they had the, the 666, number of the beast, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the <laughs> devil, the apocalypse, and the, and the Antichrist, yeah. and all that stuff. So that was like kind of the allure. Oh, I got to learn about this shit. Yeah, you revelations. Know? Yeah, and here we are yeah. in it. Oh, you, well, you'd yeah. have to at least, okay, now, come on now. Let's, let's, let's just face reality or at least what we're in. <laughs> Whatever you believe or not. Yeah. Whatever we're experiencing right now certainly feels like that. Yeah. Apocalyptic. Well, I mean, it feels like it's coming back online a little bit at a time, man. What do you know? mean by like, that? It could be back online. Well, I mean, like, uh, we're getting back to the economy being... Yeah, uh, it's a tease. You know, rocking. Yeah, it's and, a little but, soft you know, tease. I mean, it's a little twist. Fucking gas is $5 a gallon right now. Yeah, who, who uh, knows what it'll be uh, by they're, midsummer. They're, they're not getting you one way, they're getting you another yeah, way. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Well, we're going to ease you up here a little bit here to make you think that you're uh, nice and free to do whatever you want and the world's <laughs> coming back. But then we're going to gouge it hardcore and slide it in this way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're going to twist the knife a couple times along the way. Well, you know, the whole, the whole, I mean, inflation is just through the roof right now. It's fucking crazy, man. Mm. You know, everything's just so expensive. And it, I mean, I don't understand how this is supposed to be building back better. Is that the thing? Uh, right? I don't understand how that is doing. What about it. the slogans? The yeah. slogans aren't working too good these days. No. I don't think they ever did, but <laughs> I think we should get rid of the slogans. Yeah. <laughs> That's the it first It definitely part. doesn't hold up, man. No. Yeah, all I know is that I'm What good is a slogan cash. is if it doesn't work? Like when you went to Burger King, have it your way. Yeah. You know, the slogan usually had to mean something. Yeah, not in politics. Politics Slogans is don't just mean lies anything. <laughs> coming from both sides of the aisle. It's just lies, 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 and then uh, hopefully you'll vote for me because I lied better than the other guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, again, well, if this is the apocalypse, yeah. and you are stuck at home right now, and all you have is a credit card with some money on your bank account, go to stonerdudearcot.com and get the Stoner Dude <laughs> coloring book. It's while you're sitting in whatever little world you create at home. StonerDudeArt.com. 
Uh, so anyway, so Bong, the band, uh, yeah. has a album called Destroy All Humans. Oh, yeah. We it, did a little thing with that. It's very, we? yes, you played it on uh, the first show we did a couple years ago during yeah. the pandemic. Or we'll have to go back on the archives, anybody out there. Uh, <laughs> this, this is the it's third. all up there. It's all up there. Yeah. But anyway, so, but now that, I'll be positive. Yeah. Um, now that you say, anyways, that we are going back online, we're going out, and we're starting to get a little bit more back to... I mean, I'm doing a ton of shows right now. Yeah, I mean, live music is coming back, or it has been back, and slowly... Yeah. It's, still, it's still like a struggle, but it's out there. We want to play, and the venues want us to play, and everybody wants to play, and we all want to get back to where we're having entertainment again. Um, so anyway, so Bong is uh, we got a bass player now. Nice, and uh, we will be doing some shows here in Vegas in twenty. What is it? Twenty twenty two? It's twenty twenty two right now. Twenty twenty two already. You lose track of time. Lose an entire yeah. year your life, man. Twenty twenty two. Uh, Bong will be doing some shows, and, and along with Hell Mary. Uh, the, my band Hell Mary is with uh, Mary Crea, who you've had on your show. I love Mary. She's a great guest you've had on the show. She's amazing. You know, I, I'll, I'll tell the backstory with Hell Mary. I love uh, Mary Crea so much and think she's such an amazing singer and a great talent and personality that I felt my, and along with the other band members, but me, I'll say I was the driving force and I am the driving force and she knows it. And anyways, uh, I wanted to make this band so that no matter what, number one, I'll have a band to play in. Yeah. That's cool. But she'll always have a band named after her that she could play no matter what happens. That's awesome. You know what I mean? So it's, it's something that can keep going that Mary Crea could always have her band. And call it what she want. We decided on Hail Mary. We said Hail Mary. Anything with Mary in it. Yeah. Right? And so one of the band members, uh, James, our bass player, said Hail Mary, like a Hail Mary pass yeah. in football, uh, popularized by Roger Staubach back in the 70s. <laughs> Uh, but, and I said, hail Mary and I was thinking hail Mary, but I didn't say it. Yeah. And I said, hail Mary to Mary. And she said, how about hell Mary? So I knew we were on the, <laughs> we were on the same wavelength uh, because I noticed how dark she is in oh, yeah. so many ways. She's yeah, awesome. She, she likes all that dark anime. Yeah. And, uh, she's all vampires into Vampires and stuff. Exactly. She loves the vampires yeah. and the monsters and all that kind of stuff. The dark. Yeah. She goes to New Orleans on Halloween. and That's got to be fun. It's crazy. So, hell, hell Mary. Made sense to me. So, and we're playing at Vamped at least once a month. Um, Jeff Duncan's playing guitar. Oh, Did you dude. have Jeff on the show yet? I need to call Jeff. He's he's we keep talking about it, trying to get him on, and like he's a busy guy. He's he's gonna be on soon enough, man. Well, if he's, you, know? if he's, you gotta be like, what? You too busy for me? Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, people got schedules, and he's touring around and doing all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, but yeah, slightly. I want to get him on. I'd like to get him in here, and I'd like to get some of his brothers in here with him. At some oh, point, yeah, because I yeah. love his brothers too. Yeah, yeah. But I was just at. Um, they have their band DC Four. Yeah, DC Four, Duncan Clan yeah, Four, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're awesome. It's a fantastic band, and he just dropped a new solo album. We had um, uh, Constantine Jason Cohen on. Yeah, yeah. And he's the one who produced it. And it's Constantine, amazing. You, what do you know about what do you know about producing? <laughs> I make I make records. Are you hear me, Jason? Uh, I, I love Jason, but he's a character we could definitely uh, talk about all day long. I'm sure oh, yeah. he's a great guest on your oh, show. Yeah. <laughs> he is a character, man. Yeah, and even after we got done talking, on the, I think we did like a two-hour episode, and then we ended up in my kitchen talking shit for like another two hours. Oh, really? Know? Stuck around for another two yeah, hours? You couldn't get I mean, rid of him? The guest that wouldn't leave? Back and forth, man. You know, <laughs> I know. We, uh, we got you know uh, a lot of history together. He's a great producer, great uh, musician, and he's created some music with us. Which, actually, he uh, speaking of Jason Constantine, gives me a segue for this. Uh, so I also have my other band, Raiderhead. Yes. Well, Raiderhead, for those of you who don't know, uh, you can find Raiderhead on Facebook, uh, Raiderhead slash LV. Uh, uh, yeah, Raiderhead slash LV on Facebook is our Facebook page. So uh, I did this for 20 years in Oakland, California, in the Bay. We're both from the Bay, right? We, we know the area and stuff. I think about you whenever... As a matter of fact, I'm going there next month, man, to go visit for a few days. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got to go back there and hang out in San Francisco and Oakland for a couple of days, and it's, it's such a beautiful area. So anyways, I was there for 20 or so years, 
And uh, I made a band to play at the radio games in the parking lot. When I say I, I mean my band, the band members. Yeah. Uh, my brother, Mutt, Van Dammit, Jimmy the Higher One, our guitar player, Bobby Venom. Um, we all went out in the parking lot before every single Raider home game for, oh gosh, 15 years. Like every home game out in the parking lot uh, playing in front of thousands and thousands of Raider fans. That's so So it cool. became like a a cult kind of band yeah. Um, that only Raider fans would like. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even normal people wouldn't like it, only Raider fans. Yeah, well, I mean, you but, guys are ridiculous. You change all the lyrics of the songs to Raiders lyrics. Yeah, and we yeah, wrote, I love it. And it's we wrote so originals, great. too. It was, it's all about... Uh, Facebook right here. It's all about, what do you call it? Uh, oh, nice. I mean, it's a, it's a tribute band for the Raiders, a football yeah. team. So anyways, uh, we did that for many years, and then lo and behold, I moved to Vegas, talk about fate. I thought I was leaving it all behind <laughs> with the Raiders at the Oakland Coliseum. I said goodbye to the Oakland Coliseum yeah. until we meet again, until I come back. And now, well, I'm sure I probably had a little bit to do with it, just a little bit, in case anybody wants to blame me. Uh, but now the Raiders are here in Las Vegas in a $2 billion stadium. And I figured it would behoove me <laughs> to not put the band back together to do events. So uh, as this last uh, season went by where they actually had fans in the stands for the first time. I got to go to game one. Of Did that. you? Yeah, the Seahawks and the Raiders pregame. Oh, you got game to go to the preseason one. game, right? Yeah, on. the very first How did you like the new stadium? In. It was amazing. It's an amazing stadium. Did you ever yeah. imagine there'd be a $2 billion football stadium right in the middle? Not 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 on the outskirts of Vegas. Yeah. On the strip, practically. Oh, across yeah. The, across the freeway from With the strip. With no parking. It's ridiculous. No parking. But whatever. They seem to figure it out. I uh, just park like a mile away 70% and walk in. 70% of the attendees are walking from across the bridge yeah. from the casinos. And that was the whole idea. That's why Vegas was so behind it, and that's why the businesses were behind it, oh, yeah. because they're going to make the money off of it, you of get course. Get people in the casinos gambling. Which is great, great. Sell those hotel rooms, you yeah. know, keep them going, keep them tailgating. That's literally, uh, like, all the entertainment, all the everything that they do on the Strip, it's literally just, can we get them in the casino? Because yeah, once yeah. we get them in the casino, yeah. they're going to put money in those slot machines, and I don't care how much I lose on these shows or... Any of this, the football stadium, parking, any of that stuff, man, it's just like get them in there to spend money on the slots, man. They'll just keep dumping cash in our pockets. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what this Vegas is about making money. They'll say yes uh, to making money. Yeah. Which is great. It's what we all love about it. Uh, to yeah, me, absolutely. that's what makes it old school here. Yeah. How can we do it? Yeah. How can we make it happen? Well, so, because the Raiders came back to, or came to Vegas and or now reside here and play here, I got the band back together, or at least a new. Uh, uh, facsimile, you know. I got new members. Yeah, Jeff uh, Duncan. Jeff Duncan is playing guitar for us. Uh, we so, anyways, we did a couple shows last season. You were there for the very first one we did. It was a rager at Rockstar Bar. I man. forgot. Yeah, you so did the sound people. for that. I was so How happy cool was that? Huh? It was really fun, man. I, I mean, the I fact that I, we, I it. walk in the door and there you are doing yeah. sound for the band. You well, know? you know, I was waiting for things to kick back on, man. You know, the 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 corporate work hadn't started yet, and I was just like. You know, I, I worked at a couple different small clubs as things are coming back and This up. is at the Rockstar Bar on Las Vegas Boulevard in Las Vegas. Great bar. And, uh, yeah, and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed getting back into mixing bands again. Um, and I was doing some raves and stuff like that. But it's like, uh, yeah, you know, going to bed at 4 in the morning, it's <laughs> it's not my cup of tea anymore, man. You know, I used to love it. Right. And now I'm like, dude, honestly, I'm like uh, 9, 10 o'clock, and I am out. Oh, like light. You really yeah. did go to the other side. I know. I do. I wake up bright and early. And I was like, uh, yesterday, I'm like, I'm going to sleep in because I just did like, you know, almost four weeks in a row without a day off. Wow. And uh, you work hard for the money. I do work hard for the money, bro. Uh, and uh, traveling and everything, man, it was just gunning it. Uh, but yeah, I, I was like, I'm gonna sleep in as long as I can. Don't set an alarm. 6:53, I was up. Wow. And I was like, what happened to me, man? I'm falling asleep. You still about yeah. four in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> four in the morning. I'm kind of dozing off a little bit. Oh, uh, bro. Oh, uh, well, hey, man. Like I said, you're making just, the you dough. Know, different lifestyle, man. I so, like it, though. It's nice. Well, back, uh, as far so back to the Raiders uh, and when I, when I mentioned Jason Constantine. So I got the band back together and uh, I wrote a song 
literally wrote the lyrics. And it's a parody of the song Viva Las, uh, uh, Viva Las Vegas. Yeah. It's Viva Las Raiders. It's on YouTube. You can go to YouTube and you can type in Raiderhead and type in Viva Las Raiders. And uh, so I went to Jason and asked him to help me record the song. And he not only helped me record the song, I recorded the drums at Vinny's uh, uh, studio, the Tone Factory. Yeah. Vinny Castaldo. I, I, recorded, I recorded the drums over there. I uh, went over to Jason's house and, and he helped out. He actually played the rhythm guitars and helped me oh, orchestrate nice. it and put it together. Uh, I wrote all the lyrics and did like a lyric video and wrote the song Viva Los Raiders. And so because... Hey, because do I, I have your permission to play it? Of course, yes, you do. You can also get it on Spotify and iTunes and all the different digital downloads uh, if anybody wants to buy it. But you can also watch it on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, yes, of course, yeah. Are you going to play it right now? I'm going to play it. Keep talking about right, it. Yeah, okay. So I went to Jason. I said, I got this idea for Viva Lost Raiders. Yeah. I want to make the theme song for the Raiders before they even, you know, play games here, which we did. Yeah. I uh, wrote the lyrics. My brother sings it. Jason plays some rhythm guitars on there. Uh, James Sperry plays bass, and Jeff Duncan plays a, some, a lot of the solo, a little noodling. <laughs> so then I take this song to a, a radio dude, a very popular, famous radio host by the name of JT the Brick. He's uh, one of the voices for the Raiders, does Raider Nation Radio here in uh, Las Vegas. I took it to him because I've known him for 20 years, and he's always supported the band. And now he plays this music every single day on his outro ah. at the end of his radio show, you know, which is pretty cool. And we're pretty stoked about that, too. And again, I, I, that's where I put some, much of the thanks to Jason Constantine, because as much as we know Jason Constantine could be a cantankerous, <laughs> unique individual oh, let's say you know let's say the least man. is that the you nice know? way to say that's it that's a nice way to put it I'm lovingly sure I mean that lovingly that. Jason yeah absolutely man but having said that he helped me make this happen so that we could get this radio play and because of the radio play and because of the con connection with the radio station with my DJ dude or not DJ the talk host yeah. dude, JT the Brick uh, n these other opportunities have come up where Raiderhead has already played in the parking lot at the Raider games. And our next gig, which is this is an official promotion, will be Friday, April 29th. The NFL draft is going to be in Las Vegas. There's going to be a million NFL fans on the strip. It's a big to do, to say the least. And Raiderhead will be at the Tropicana 8 o'clock. Friday night, the April nice. 29th, for the Black Hole party out in the pool area. And uh, well, so we're, we're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep having fun with it. I so, love it. Thank you, JT. Thank you, uh, Jason Constantine. And thank you very much for helping us get Raiderhead back on the map again to where we're doing this all the time again. Yeah. I love this part, too. You get the whole crowd screaming Raiders at the end of it there. That's the way they do it. So that's the football talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still doing Raider Fan Radio uh, on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, type in Raider Fan Radio, and I'm still doing my uh, my show. Uh, we're, we're, we're doing it like twice a month now, but we usually do it every week during the football season. And, uh, and that's still a lot of fun. I've been doing that for 20 years with my cohorts, Raider Rob and the beautiful Black Hole Steph. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, this is uh, the... YouTube page you got going on. You guys do really well too, man. You know, you're getting uh, some close made, to a thousand views. views on there. Yeah. Uh, our, average, our shows are averaging about 30, 000, 25 to 30,000 views per show. Yeah, it's pretty awesome, man. I mean, it's it's not Joe Rogan, you know, uh, <laughs> viewers or what's that guy, Russell Brand? Russell you Brand, know. I think he just hit five million. Yeah, five million. I mean, hey, what about you? What do you got? How many how many subscribers do you got? Nothing, man. Are you I saying that right I'm now, wasting my time right here talking to you? 252 subscribers oh, they're, right now. They're all great people. Yeah, every, <laughs> single, every single one of you. I love every single one of you, man. Thank you so much for subscribing. That's you're right. amazing. You know? And if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, 
Yeah. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get monetized, man. You know, like, I keep doing this. Share. Wait, wait. I do this there on my go. show. Yeah. I put. Where is this? Where it is on the screen? Yeah, it'll be right there. Like, share, and subscribe. Or is it like, share, and subscribe? The second one was the right one. I'll try to remember to okay. pop that up at 30. Like, minutes. share, and subscribe. Ah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and when you're done with that, you go, go to stonerdudeart.com and you get your new Stoner Dude coloring book. Color your brains out. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's hard, man. It's hard trying to earn that money online, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, yeah. it's a lot of fun doing these things, so it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember the Little Rascals? Did you ever watch the Little Rascals yeah. when you were a kid? I mean, I know it was a generational thing, but even when I was a kid, it was really old. Yeah. Well, they did the uh, movie remake when I was younger. So, uh, kind of, But did you watch the actual original Little Rascals in black and white, 1930s? Yeah, I've seen some of them. I didn't uh, watch it all dude, the way Dude, you need to get obsessed. Oh, yeah? Yes. If you're out there and internet land right make sure you go and check out every single little rascals episode <laughs> uh, when i was a kid watching that the cool thing about the little rascals is here is these there were these little kids but they were like and i know it was the the, the tv or the movie companies are the ones producing and all that but you, when you're a little kid you you suspend uh, was it reality? Disbelief. Disbelief. That's it. And uh, anyways, but the, all the little rascals. The cool thing about them was that they lived in these worlds where they pretty much were almost like the adults and the things they did. They did radio shows, <laughs> you know, productions with dance numbers and, and, and a variety shows, very vaudevillian. You know, they had the, the dog would pull the string for the curtain to open. They were very innovative yeah. and very resourceful. So this is to me when we do stuff like this, yeah, we're not making a bunch of money at it or nothing, but we're certainly enjoying the fun of it and, and living our kind of creative world in our mind and doing it in re real life and having fun with it. Absolutely, man. And what else are we going to do? You know what I mean? It's not like I can just go to work every day and just that's my life, you know? And you got to have you got to have something that you're creating, man, you know? And I'm also doing, you know, music. I'm trying. I'm uh, working speaking on of which, that's right. Okay, now I got to read. Now yeah, gotta, yeah. We got to read directly. Where's my hands here? You're right there. We got to right there. Where's my hands? <laughs> we got to direct <laughs> the interview to Jason. Wait. Uh, All right? So yeah. Jason, oh shit! I've been, I've been, I've had visions. I've had, I've had these like dreams, dark images in my mind, and and they all involve you. I need to relive my primus. Uh, I, get, I need my primus outlet, and what yeah, I mean by I that, that, for I anybody that. who doesn't know, Jason Froberg here. And I've said this many times. I'll keep saying it. His nickname, I gave him, is Les Claypool Jr. Because he plays and looks and sounds and sings and emulates like nobody else can on the planet. Thank you. One of the greatest talents who I'm a big fan of uh, is Les Claypool, the bass player, lead bass player from Primus. <laughs> and uh, you've done it for so many years. You've mastered the craft You've you've uh, put together a band called Blue Collared Bastards, yeah. Of which uh, Paulie DeSibio, local drummer, per played in for a while and still plays He's amazing. in. Amazing. And I also play in too. Me and Paulie kind of switch drum duties yes, when, whenever it's available. Uh, something I'm happy to do and proud to do. But I tell you this much: when I'm doing it, I'm loving it because I love playing Primus music. <laughs> I'm a drummer, by the way. An amazing drums. drummer. Thank you. An amazing drummer. So uh, we did the Primus thing for a while. I mean, we played a whole entire, close to 90 minutes, I think. We yeah. even did one show. I tried to do the whole thing. You yeah, know, I mean, you, I mean, you, you, literally, the, you had the stand-up slap, <laughs> slap stick. What's it called? I just did, you know, stand-up bass, but it's, it's a, a stick bass. Okay, yeah. a stick bass. That's what it yeah. is. You had that going. You had that. <laughs> <laughs> you right? had that old little <laughs> weird little box thing that made the sounds. Uh, uh, and of course, you played all the parts great. You still have to show me, by the way, how to play John the Fisherman before I die. That, yeah, absolutely. That's my goal in life to learn how to play. That's a good one, man. I just want to play John the Fisherman on bass before I die. I have a video of that. And then I could die, right? <laughs> so anyways, back to my question, if there was one. Uh, can we or will we somehow because I know it's been a little while since you've disconnected from that 
time you put into your base. But because I know you can and have this ability inside you, I somehow want to somewhere, now that music is opening up, just find a 30-minute slot somewhere. <laughs> some club, some bar, I don't care. Yeah. I want to go on stage with you. And you could talk a little bit about Anthony as well. Yeah, we uh, loved it. We had to figure out getting him back involved. So yeah. uh, Anthony, the, the great guitar player who played guitar for the band Blue Collar Bastard, is there somehow or some way I could convince you now that I've ta- told billions of listeners out there <laughs> that are calling your name, will uh, we be able to go out and do a show or at least some kind of set and play some Primus music? Yeah, I don't see why not, man. You know, life is short. I just I have to put the effort in. That's all it comes down to, man. We got to pick out some songs. Maybe we'll pick out some songs and I'll start practicing them. Oh, can I we, pick, you know, after we, we do this, you pick the song. Well, we don't. Do, I don't have to pick all of them. How about <laughs> let's say I pick three, you pick three, Anthony picks three. Yeah, we'll have to see if he's. Well, is Anthony in? That's the question. Do you think Anthony will do it? I mean, if he if he wants. Where to. are we with Anthony? Come on, I need yeah, to know. I don't know, man. You know, we'll see. Well, I got to talk to Anthony. I have my buddy Avron who really wants to do it too. Who? Avron from Green Jelly. Is he, can he do it? He says he can. Uh, I don't need to hear. I you know how many times I hear people say they can. Yeah, you know, but he's a really talented guitar player. I, I, I don't doubt him. Yeah. What's his name again? Uh, Avron. Avron, maybe, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not dissing you, Avron, <laughs> at all. It's just that I love Anthony. And, but if Anthony can't do it or won't do it for whatever reason, we certainly have to explore our other options. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Primus Music is certainly a unique style that, you really have to be a huge fan and want to and have spent some time with the music to do it. Yeah. I got this right here, too, for us. What is this? And, uh, what are we listening to? Oh, damn. So Who's playing is, drums there? That's Pauly D. That's Pauly D. Yeah. I got to do the... Um, we recorded one of the shows we played. Uh, my brother's been mixing it down on multi-track. And uh, I got to mix the cameras and put it all together. I just never took the time to do it. But this is one of the ones that we did over at VAM. Uh, oh, my God. This is a really great good. video. Do you look at it. Was it how many cameras is it? Uh, four or five cameras we got going on. Oh, so. yeah, man. Paulie's digging in, man. He's an amazing drummer. Man. Yeah, yeah. He's got this beautiful rhythm that's just perfect for it. He smacks the shit out of him. Look at that beard. Yeah, that was back when the beard was happening, too, man. Uh, yeah, this is a Christmas show. You can tell by my tie. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, honestly, I could just sit, get lost and watch this, man. This is... Oh, only one smoke machine's working. You got the smoke machine. You got the lights, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I have a lot more lights now, too. And uh, I've been working on a little PA rental thing, and so I got lights and sound and backline and all kinds of stuff that I've been uh, investing in. So it's it'll come out pretty heavy, too, man. And we were talking about uh, going to Burning Man. So this year we're going to Burning Man. Who's we? Uh, so um, me and my buddy Ricky, my buddy Noah, and some of my family. I'm taking my dad for his 71st birthday. I, I've never been to Burning Man. Yeah. Well, it's not uh, It's I've, not too late to get on board. I've I always, haven't submitted the blueprints yet for our campsite. I've always wondered about it. But, I mean, what is it about Burning Man? I mean, I could see from the outlook. I remember growing up uh, and going to all the different dead shows and just different concerts my whole life. And I've camped out and I've done all kinds of cool stuff out in the woods and the desert and all that. Yeah. And, I, and Burning Man kind of t- took on a life over the past 20 years or so. I don't know how long it's been anyways. But um, but it's uh, I see it and it's almost as, as hardcore as I used to. Remember we talked in the beginning of the show how we used to party on and on and on? Oh, yeah. I don't party on and on and on quite like I used to. <laughs> Uh, uh, I can still party on and on, yeah, on and on and on and on. That's what Burning Man seems to me. It's like it never ends. I see people yeah. come home from Burning Man and they're literally still covered in dirt and whatever 
goo and scum they have on their body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets gross, man. Yeah, they've been like, out for a few up there. days partying and drinking. And oh, yeah. Dropping acid. Fraternizing. And taking MDMA and going to raves. Yeah. And it's, it's fucking wild up there, man. Doing things they don't exactly recall, but they know they had yeah. a great time. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, we're going up there. I'm going up there to do my, uh, my Zen thing, man. So I'm going to just offer like a place for people to... to retreat from all that for a second or to have like a nice a- relaxing area uh and like gatorade and water and shit like that out for people when is it when are you going april t- or august 28th okay so plenty of time between now and then yeah to figure it out yeah well we know and actually you have to submit plans oh, you have to submit really? everything in advance yeah i have to have it in by the end of april oh. and then they let me know if i get approved by june Dang. we're building a city it's crazy you're building a city we're, that's what it is that's what bernie man is so they build a city it's called black rock city and uh and it's this um clock basically and so you get sectors of the clock and that kind of assigns where you are so you can kind of figure it out but the city's you know it's circular so it can keep expanding out and getting bigger and bigger wow. and bigger uh, and the Bernie Man's right in the middle of it, so everything surrounds it. So no matter where your camp is, you can see the Bernie Man. Everybody beats in the, the middle. Man. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, so it's like, no, I have to. Um, uh, I'm I'm sending in blueprints. Bernie Man is the campfire. Yeah, and exactly. everything is around the campfire. It's crazy, but they wow. only burn it on Saturday. I think right. is what it is. I've I've never been. So yeah, but I'm gonna be doing meditations and yoga and stuff like that for people. So I'm doing sunrise sunset meditation. Um, offering hydration and stuff like that and a nice place to chill and relax and have have speakers up and stuff playing relaxing tunes. So it's just like, you know, people are going to be doing hardcore drugs and partying their asses off. And the, I just want to offer a because I'm not going to bring all my gear up. The you're first not time. the stoner you used to be, but you're definitely the hippie. Yeah, I am still a hippie, bro. You can't, <laughs> you know? But yeah, I mean, I mean I'm going to be like I. I you're do like the, an evolved hippie. I do the sober thing now, so I'm going to be just doing my meditation. Sober, being dude. Sober the whole time. <laughs> but on the Bernie Man, I've already said I'm. I'm fucking still going to drop some acid. Oh, okay. When they, right, when they light yeah, the yeah. Bernie Man on okay, fire, right. of course. Okay, now let's talk yeah. acid. Yeah. Where oh, does man. one get good acid if you're going to? take the time to do acid you don't do yeah. it often anymore yeah do you feel confident with your hookup of getting acid that you feel that you or that you pretty much know it's going to be good well that's the problem because there's a lot of bad acid yeah. trips i've taken some bad acid you don't know until you take it yeah that's the thing about acid Right? Yeah. You well, really don't know until you take really it. really LSD-25, right? It's this combination there's of it. something so else in there's, it. There's chemical tests that you can get that you can check and make sure that there, there's no fentanyl used to produce it. Can you that, do that? Are you going to do all that? And that, uh, what, the test at all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? And, uh, Are you a chemist too? I mean, I just like to, I'm a, I'm, I'm a nerd. That's so why I'm I asking like, you, yeah. because if you're going to find good acid, yeah. then we can at least talk in the future. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, the, the trick is, you know, everybody, I uh, have this, this simple joke that, uh, you know, everybody's like, how the fuck do you find acid? I go, I tell everybody I do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And yeah. they're just like, oh, well, you need some? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I do need some. <laughs> how much money do you need? Uh, so, you know, you gotta, you got to hunt for that shit, man. It's yeah. like. That's what I'm saying. It's this cra- and then you find someone who has it. And then that is, uh, it's only available for a second. Because that guy, whoever's making it, isn't, you know, they're going to be doing it. They make a batch and it's gone. Yeah. It's like someone making a batch of really good cookies or whatever, you know, or of anything. It's like once the batch is gone, the batch is gone. It's gone, man. Never to be had again. Yes. A good batch is hard to find. Yeah. And so, like, we got this really good stuff one time. And uh, it was this beautiful, we called it 24 karat gold. <laughs> That's gold the name of the acid? And the gel, yeah, and it's gold flakes and gel acid. 24 karat gold. Yeah, and it was just fantastic. I mean, it was rainbow rainbow unicorn land acid, man. Wow. I mean, just made you so happy and everything so sparkly and just fresh, but it was really transparent. It wasn't like, didn't weigh you but down. But did you trip? Oh, Yeah. No, you know, you take enough. Because I've taken, I mean, I've gone on some trips, man. Oh, yeah, bro. I mean, where like height and depth and width and colors, they're meaningless. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just perceptions of the mind. I bro. mean, you're, you you're like literally, it's like a movie. Yeah. Where they bend everything and use special effects, but the special effects is literally what you see in front of your eyes. Yeah. 
Well, I always say if, uh, like, for me, it's not a good acid trip unless I completely have to lie down and close my eyes and let it take me. Like, uh, I can't stand up anymore. My eyes are so fucked that if I open them, like, it's just, just you such You won't be able to take it. It's overwhelming. It's going to be so overwhelming that you just have to, like, you have to close your eyes and lie down. Uh, and that's where the real work gets done. That's yeah. where the, <laughs> that's where the real yeah, work gets done. I man. like that. Yeah. That's where you're doing therapy and you're working on yourself. You're dissolving your ego entirely. And uh, and that's that's my game now. I was doing it for fun for a while, and now I do incredibly long sober stints where I just water vegetables, exercise all day, meditate all day, just really take care of my body. You're and real, you're real inspiration. It. And then dose as hard as you fucking can, <laughs> man, you know, uh, uh, and like do it on a fast. So you fast into it. So you're taking it on an empty stomach and uh, you will you will meet God. You right. know what That's I mean? what I'm talking about. Yeah. I want to meet God. Well, that's how I've you do met it. God. Yeah. I've met God on acid. Yeah. I one time discovered all the answers to the universe. Mm hmm. In a moment, but you can't it for, <laughs> for them to translate into words, though. And I and I discovered I went out into the ends of the universe, yeah. the galaxy. I astral projected. I looked down upon the universe, and I had it all figured out, and it all made hundred percent sense to me. Perfect sense, as a matter of fact. It was a, an epiphany. Yeah. And the moment I figured all that out, the moment. Yeah. I literally came crashing back into my body and forgot everything. Ah, yeah, but Spaced. you had it there. I space brained. Oh yeah, exactly. Well, now <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? So yeah, no, it's uh, that's the reason. I so what did we learn weed. today, kids? We learned uh, stonerdudeart.com. We learned to go get the new Stoner Dude coloring book at stonerdudeart.com. We learned that Jason Froberg is open to the idea of doing another Primus show. Oh yeah, sooner than later, <laughs> and. Jason knows where to get the killer doses. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why Theoretically. I, I like to hang out with Jason Frober. Yeah, man. So you should come to Burning Man with us. Uh, you know what? You've certainly sold me. If you, you haven't know. sold me, whoever's watching now, I'm sure you sold them. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, it'll yeah. be a lot of fun. So the year after, like next year, right? This year we're going real light. And then next year I might bring like some stage and PA and lights and Ricky was like, well, you got to bring your Primus tribute with you if you do it. And I was like, I don't really do the Primus tribute anymore. And Can you bring like, a generator and all that? I'm, and go bringing, play? I'm bringing two generators. Oh, forget it, dude. Yeah. You got to do a concert out in the Yeah. In Bur Where is Burning Man? Where it's, is it's just in northern Nevada. It's eight hours from here. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's just, you go up the day before. Like if you're, if you're doing a camp, right, you're going to go and get work passes. And uh, they're called... WAPs, not wet ass pussies, <laughs> work access passes. And uh, you can go up to six days before the show opens and set up all your crazy stuff. So, like, people are up there with construction. They're bringing uh, semi trucks full of stuff up and they're building entire yeah, it's a lot structures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so they come way early and they come and with set crews. everything up. Yeah. They come with crews and heavy equipment and they like do it up. And then it opens on the 28th, well, which is my I, dad's birthday. I know. I saw your dad's birthday. Huh? Yeah. So I'm taking him up there for 70. I've just been trying to. <sighs> How old is he? 70? 71. You're taking your dad to Bernie, man, on yeah. his 71st birthday. Yeah. I love my dad. That is cool, man. Yeah. That he's a cool. cool guy, man. Yeah. He's a cool guy. So yeah, we, uh, you should have been there for his 70th birthday. It was bonkers man it was it was a ridiculous little party we threw for him nice yeah well, you know 70 yeah. man you gotta have to have all the fun you can get right yeah <laughs> we we made sure he was having as much fun as humanly possible. you know it's uh just you know as far as uh camping and not doing all the things you're talking about and celebrating life that's what it is that's certainly uh while I, was, I don't know for sure by the end of april i will have a specific answer burning man sounds great i'm certainly in the shared mindset as you are yeah especially over this past few months as things have opened up. And now I have been back to traveling a little bit, getting on airplanes and doing things here and there. Uh, I'm definitely going, like I said, I'll go to the Bay Area, back to the Bay uh, for a few days. And I'm thinking about these little trips I want to take with a very close friend of mine and uh, go go hit the road, man. Just yeah. go hit the road and see, see the world and enjoy the moments and... Uh, see the stars and 
and just uh, enjoy some nature. Nature's everything, man. Like now that it's now that the weather's picked up, picked back up, man. I'm immediately like, when are we going to the lake? And of course, when now we that we want to do mountains? this, gas is ten bucks a gallon or yeah, whatever. It worth is. it? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. We're just going. go, go, yeah. Go while Get you can. Get out of nature, man. Go while you can, man. Because yeah. it's definitely gonna go by fast. Uh, this Dude, summer- I'm almost forty. What the fuck happened? You yeah, know, I was this twenty-year-old kid with an alcohol problem. And now I'm almost forty. <laughs> what the shit, dude? I'm fifty-four. I, dude, right? How does that happen? Yeah, you know, I hold it together for you. You look great. Thank you, thank you, yeah, you thank look you, great, thank you, thank you. <laughs> but the point being, back to kind of what you just said, though, it goes by so fast, man. Uh, if that's anything, I certainly implore to younger people. And our, and what we do for a living, there's really no age kind of bracket it's in other yeah. words we work with people in music and art and all the different uh, and the, the entertainment industry uh, from the you know teens and 20s up into older than we are veterans that are older so my point being is it's a long it's a it's a big age gap but we're all in the same kind of doing the same thing yeah and we're all watching each other kind of get older before our eyes or disappear before our eyes really before you know it uh, I can't even tell you how many friends of mine. At, I'm 54. A lot of my friends didn't make 50. Yeah. Um, it goes by so quick. So yeah, man, you're right. I'll, I'll pay the five bucks or six bucks or whatever. It's my if it's my last six bucks. I want to go have a great time <laughs> and get away, you know, and live a little bit of life before it's all over and all, it's all said and done. Yeah. There's no, you know, there's nothing else to do, man. You can't take any of it with you. Money's just a fucking illusion that they hold over our heads. <laughs> you know, it's not, not even worth anything. That's the crazy, this, you know, we're, we're on fucking fiat money or whatever. It's not even gold standard money. So it's like worthless paper that they just dictate how much it is. So are you back to traveling with uh, your your gig, what you do for a living with yeah. the sound system? Are you getting on planes now? Absolutely, man. Yeah. Going all, did you get vaccinated? I got vaccinated. You got vaxxed. I, I didn't get vaxxed. vaxxed. You got yeah. double vaxxed. Wait, wait. I had to. Do that again. The I got double vaxxed. double vaxxed. Yeah. I, uh, for work, man, I had to do it. And uh, I... You know, it was either that or give up my career. I spent 20 years building. Yeah. And I chose to not give up my career. I spent 20 years building. And it fucked me up. That vaccine fucked me up. That's all, that was going to be my next question. Because yeah, it, was, it sucked. Here's the thing. I know a lot of people, look, uh, everybody out there has all their opinions and thoughts and experiences when it comes to this. But yeah. the fact is, I do know a handful of individuals, and you just said it without even me asking you. Oh, yeah. If you had any kind of sa- side effects. Uh, I have a close friend of mine who's a bass player uh, for a living, and ever since he got his shot, his his fingers, his hands not working the same. That sucks. You know, yeah. All he knows is that it happened right after that. Yeah. Know? So many people have that. Yeah. I, I know people. Everybody who has supposedly different. died right after getting it. I mean, not oh, that yeah, they supposedly that. died. Right. They fucking died, and it happened right after they took the shot. Right. So supposedly yes. they died from the shot. And that's shot. where I personally. You know? And it's like that's I'm, fucking crazy. I'm apprehensive. I lost two people in my life over that. Apprehensive, shit. man. You shouldn't get it. Honestly, like, I mean, if you don't want it, it's that's your choice, you know? And th- to those who want it, get four fucking boosters, you know? Good for you. Like, it's just, you know, mandating it for everybody's the issue I have. Well, yeah, that, that's, the, uh, that's where I was going to uh, kind of go with it, too. The fact of the matter is that I, it isn't just a choice, though. You yourself said that you were uh, in a sense pressured to do it to get yeah. to get your to keep your gig. No, yeah, I was going to lose my I was yeah, going to lose my income, job, my, you know. Income. It was just that was it. There were, my my job's finally coming back online and they're like we'd love to have you back, but, but <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and it had nothing to do with and the thing is it didn't have anything to do with the government mandates. It was the corporate mandates. Right. Well, the, the companies they work for. That's cuz they directly answer yeah. to the government. Yeah. And when, like I said, I'm working for the devil, you know. I sold out to the devil. So yeah, I'm working yeah, for sure Google, did. you know. I'm working for uh, you Meta. know, a bunch of other companies. <laughs> <laughs> that I probably shouldn't say, and um, you know, <laughs> not if you want to stay on the yeah, internet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, um, you know, working for these big companies, and they just—they all are super about like you have to have the vaccines, you have to show up with your card, you have to have the app that scanned your card, and then like the next one I'm going on, I have to go get um, a test before I can go on job site. Some of them you're testing every day, some of them are testing twice a day yeah, on yeah. site. So as you're coming in before you start your job, they want to fucking they want to swab you up a- and, and do these rapid tests you every day. Like they're still super paranoid about it, man. I've had a couple of a few gigs. Uh, Bands, uh, production companies offer me shows to play drums 
to travel overseas and do these different things. Yeah. And it's so far, so far, I didn't jump on any of them yet because of that reason, yeah. unfortunately. And it sucks because I had to say no, you know. Mm. Um, I am, there's a good possibility I, I might go on the road with missing persons this year. I've, I've been Congratulations. Asked, I've, been, I've been asked to, and I've pretty much, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, because I definitely want, again, I want to see the country and see the sum, this summer and go travel as much as I can. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like you said, there's less, in certain states, things are still different. Um, there's just the way they, they their are. approach and everything. Some of them don't even have anything to say at all. You know, there's yeah. some states in the country that are like, they're not even living under these mandates. Or I mean, If you go anywhere in the middle in the Midwest, it's just, it, it's been over. Right. It was yeah. over And that's pretty much the year area that, that I think uh, we would travel. Yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah, that, I'll have more to report when I have actual confirmation on it, but it's something I'm definitely, uh, uh, it, it looks like it, it's going to happen and, and, and it's just a matter if I really want to or not. And I'm feeling yeah. like I do. Like I, like I said, I want to, I want to get out. Yeah, and, and get out. You know, well, just, it seems like the mandates are starting to wrap themselves into the up, air, man. into the to the traveling and the the adventure. It's fun. Yeah, I love it. I love traveling for work, and I love traveling for work with corporate because it's like when you travel for work with musicians, right? It's like it's a completely different animal. Sure, <laughs> traveling for corporate, you know, corporate. I mean, I'm, I know, I'm doing uh, flying delta like my buddies i started doing it and i was like booking allegiant flights because i'm poor and that's what i yeah to me do. too i book allegiant and my buddies are like frontiers. what flight did you get in on i didn't see you and i, I was like oh you know the uh, the allegiant one and then i had to take a connect thing and bullshit bullshit bull. they're like what are you doing man you know <laughs> just fly delta you'll get upgraded to first class after a couple flights you uh, know and i was like i've never even been on a plane that has first class dude i did it for the first time yeah uh oh my god i it was i'll, I'll tell you uh, uh, a girl, my girlfriend, booked me a flight. Yeah, uh, a couple months ago, a month ago, and I was like happy just to be on the flight. And I stepped on the plane, and I started going to the back of the plane like I normally go to. And then all of a sudden, the the stewardess chick is like, "No, no, no, you're not to come back here." I'm like, "What?" And I ended up sitting in the first class area. I'm like, "What's going on here?" And I got a taste of the, the, the fans of the Grey Poupon life, you know? Oh, nice. <laughs> Have you got any Grey Poupon? Uh, Remember that commercial? Yeah. Uh, leg room and stuff. But it was like almost like, wow, man. They really, it, it'd be nice if all the seats, though, were at least yeah. a little more roomy. Just give me, a, could. give me a couple feet. Give me a couple of inches this way or that way, yeah, you know? But you know, it's a business. I, mean, I imagine. Uh, they squeeze seven, everything they 737 can. 737 or it's, whatever. But it's, it's, it's just so weird expensive. for me. It was very weird for me. Like you said, you've never been in one. It was my first time. Yeah. It was a weird feeling to have this separate f- separation from the other people that yeah. weren't in first class. <laughs> I guess that's really where I'm going with all this. It was it was awkward and weird, but once the plane took off and I had time to sit there and just relax, all of a sudden I'm like, oh man, I could do this more often. I bet. <laughs> yeah. I have yet to get the first class upgrade, man. I'm still working on it, but uh, you know, one of these days it'll happen. I for guess me. ultimately what I'm saying is, if you can, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, enjoy it. And if I'm not doing those, you know, if I'm not flying, it's a, okay airline, to go first class once in a while. Yeah, if I don't fly an airline, I'm not getting the points to make it happen. Yeah. So it's like you gotta. You got to put that out there and start working on it in advance. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and we get we get put up in nice hotels too, man. You know, I'm usually collecting Marriott points, and it's oh, like Marriott's are you, nice. Man. So it's it's fucking dope, man. I love that stuff. So here's what we learned also: yeah. things are coming back to some degree. Yeah, you know, go they back, are. go back into our show we did in 2020, right? Our first show. We're just saying uh, episode Space Brain. 25. What was I that? I have it right here. And that was at the old station dot com. You can go check it out, and we have every episode archived, ready to rock for you, man. You can see it there. That's it right there. Yeah. yeah. Episode 25. Yeah. And and that was during the pandemic, and that was pretty much we were in the moment at that time too, and it was and it was a fun conversation. But I remember the the it was so great a conversation because it was our way of not being stuck at home. Yeah, by ourselves. We were this one. We we're venturing out and starting to kind of get out there. So, circling back to what I was pretty much the point I was trying to get to is that now we've come this far, and I'm very happy about it. Very positive about it. Thank you for having me on your show once again. Oh yeah, bro. at Space Brain Stations, 
And uh, I really appreciate you uh, letting me promote stonerdudeart.com. And I appreciate uh, you help let me promote the coloring book, which I hope everybody out there gets. And uh, technically, it even says on the, the cover, it's an adult coloring book for all you. But kids, There's adult themes. But kids can color it, too. The only thing adult theme is that there's weed in it. Like, for example, let me see here. Here's a, here's a guitar player, and he's a stoner, and his uh, guitar looks like a poppy. All right, let me see. Here's another one here. Where are they? Where's one I like a lot here? Oh, man. Here we go. Here's a cyclops, and he's smoking a bomb made out of a tree and a dragon eating a mushroom. That's what makes it adult. Mushrooms know? are yeah, so great. It's adult, but kids can color it, too. And that's it. That's it. We out of here? That's it. We're done. Oh, man. <laughs> you, make, you made my life so easy, man. I just had to sit here most of the day and just, like, comment that's occasionally. That's a wrap. Yeah. Yeah. And I need more guests like you, bro. I mean, you just do my job for me. Uh, yeah. Well, I do this at Raider Fan Radio, too. So You're a professional. Yeah. Man. You know what you This you're isn't doing. my first rodeo, as they say. I, you know, it's the, it was the third time here. Oh, yeah. I appreciate it, And bro. I will see you at the fourth. And the fifth. And the sixth. <laughs> and the 420th. Well, yes, yeah. Oh, ah. Can I please be on show number four twenty? You have to be. Okay. Good. Yeah. I have. I, yeah. I know if I haven't fucking given up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where are you? Where are you now? I think this is sixty seven. Oh, you could do it. Or go sixty six. I think I'm gonna go, put this out at sixty six. Sixty six. Yeah, this will be sixty six. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. one. Three. Yeah. 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 Because I just did. Um, it's the apocalyptic show. Six. The six. apocalypse. Yeah. Exactly. That's appropriate, man. Sneak another six. In try there to somewhere. keep it. Uh, try to keep it balanced. Because my uh, my other guest I just interviewed is uh, my friend Alex, who's the Ohm homie. He does all these uh, crystal singing bowls and singing bowl meditations. And uh, I'll skip an episode in between that because we just had Swami uh, Jnana Mudra Ananda on the last episode. Swami Swami who? Swami Nana Mudra Ananda. I gotta go check that out. It was it was a great conversation. Oh man. yeah, was yeah. it all was it all Zen stuff? Oh yeah, well Hinduism. Hinduism. Right? So he practices um, what is it Priya Yoga. Are you a Hindu? I'm a I'm a I'm all of it, man. Yeah, I'm all of it. Yeah, there's anything. Anything you put after I am is a lie. That's something that's separating you from everything else. Oh, and, blowing my mind, yeah, man. man. So, yeah, it, you, there's, you just, it, it's just I am, right? That's it. End of sentence. I am. And there's, uh, yeah, there's no separation from anything in this universe. Well, I am dimension. going to take a bong hit. Yeah. As soon as you wrap this up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, man. Well, I would like to thank my guest, Michael Masonette, the thank stoner dude. Coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming on the podcast. Uh, you'll be seeing him oh, all the time here. He's an amazing guest. And uh, stonerdudeart.com. Regular. I'll do it for you, buddy. Look at here, here. Make sure you check out stonerdudeart.com. Stoner Dude Art on Instagram. Stoner Dude Art on and Instagram. Stoner Dude Art on Twitter. Buy the coloring book. It's an amazing coloring book. And get uh, stoned in color. Get stoned in color. Uh, check out maybe touring with missing persons. Yeah, I'll maybe keep you uh, you'll be my missing 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 first uh, phone call. Yeah, well, you have to come back. If you get the tour, come back in. We'll tell everybody you're touring. Check out Raiderhead over at the Tropicana. What was the date again? Tropicana, Raiderhead, the world's only Raiders tribute band, Friday, April 29th at the Tropicana in Las Vegas uh, around 8 p.m. in the pool area. It's free to get in. And the cool thing about it is that the NFL draft will be in Las Vegas for the first time ever. And there will be a billion people on the strip in their various football jerseys partying and raging all night long and all weekend long. It will be kind of somewhere in the middle of all of it. I love it. Yeah. I will be at a meditation retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is perfect timing get away from the strip just a time yeah oh chaos. yeah if you're gonna get away that's the time yeah and then uh yep bong check out bong bong got destroy all humans on youtube that's bong destroy all humans and you can buy our album and all our music on 
all the popular digital outlets, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, uh, all the rest of them. Nice. And Hail Mary every uh, Hail Mary is at Vamped once a month at Vamped. Come check us out if you're in town. Uh, we're usually opening up for some cool band once in a while. But other than that, man, it's a great time and great musicians, great songs, great music. We choose music that we could jam on. I dig it. You know? We're not just playing covers for the sake of playing covers. We want to play covers that we could actually, like, you know, let loose a little. Yeah. I'm trying to sneak in some Rush here pretty soon. Oh, bro. We need to play some Rush, man. When we oh, do the Primus thing, we should sneak some Rush in there. That's the thing we should talk about and then really yeah. wrap it up. Yeah. Let it go and is for everybody to go check out the new Primus music that's out. Yes. And Primus is touring, playing the full album Farewell to Kings by Rush live this summer, and they will be in Las Vegas, I believe, in June. Check that out on the internet just to be safe, uh, to know the dates. But uh, we got to go check out that show. Oh, yeah. We got to see Les Claypool be, I have doing tickets. his best Getty Lee. And they keep pushing the show back. Yeah, they, yeah, they keep uh, They keep pushing it back. They postponed it twice It was already. supposed to be just a, like last week or like this week. Yeah. And then it got pushed back again. No, well, we'll hope for the best. And I mean, I bought those tickets I know they did the show somewhere. <laughs> I know they did the show somewhere because I know people that saw it and they said yeah. it was awesome. So. Oh, here? Not here, but they, oh, okay. uh, Berkeley, other parts of the country. Okay. Yeah. So anyways, yeah. Primus. Awesome. Yeah. Primus is awesome. Primus sucks, I mean. <laughs> you know exactly so yeah that's the show right uh mason that's you're awesome i i love you bud thanks for coming on love you too jason uh and my whole thing right what am i doing i'm gonna say give us a like give us a subscribe uh share you know, ring the bell share sharing is share caring. everywhere let me you know i need more subscribers check us out on social media support us on paypal and patreon and uh i think we're i think we're done Let's get out of here. Later. Peace, man. Love you, bud. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here.